Welcome to me, Tim, solving leak code problems. This question is called palindrome partitioning. All right, given a string S, partition S such that every substring of the partition is a palindrome, return all possible palindrome partitionings of S. A palindrome string is a string that reads the same backward as forward. So what does it mean to partition? Well, essentially we're trying to mm, well, it's literally that partition, like put in a break in between these strings. But what we want to make sure is that every single substring in here is a palindrome. Now, notice that we'll always have at least one answer, which with each individual character is going to be a palindrome in itself, right? So A is a palindrome, A is a palindrome, B is a palindrome. So that'll always be an answer. Whatever string we're given, we'll have at least one answer there. But what we want to check is how else can we partition this up to make every single one of these substrings palindrome. So we can see AA is a palindrome. So one of the other answers would be AAB. Now if this was also, I don't know, AAAB, then we can probably see AAAB also being an answer, or A and then AA and then B being an answer, so on and so forth. So I think we can intuit here that we can probably write a recursive function to do this. Notice how the constraint, the length is only 16. So probably we don't need to worry about optimizing or dynamic programming solutions. We can just do this straightforwardly. What we can do is say that we had question um, AAB, for example. We're going to write a function that takes in the starting position. This would be, uh, let's say this, starting position here. Uh, and we're going to check from this starting position, every single substring going on to the end of the string, is it a palindrome or not? So we know at the very beginning, A is a palindrome, right? So what we'll do is now recursively call moving this up to the second position, is this a palindrome? And that also is a palindrome, so now we go to B, that's also a palindrome, so that's gonna be one answer. But when we go back here to the second recursive call, we wanna check, hey, is AB also a palindrome? Here we can see that it's not a palindrome, so that's not gonna do anything. But when we go back to the first recursive call, now we check AA. AA is a palindrome, right? So now we move on to B, and that is a palindrome, so that's an answer. And finally, we want to check, hey, what about AAAB? Is that a palindrome? It's not, so that would end our recursive call. So really, no reason to overcomplicate this. Let's just start with getting the length of S, as well as the output, which is going to be an empty string. We are going to write a function that takes in the starting index, as well as a partial list of what we're building up so far. That's going to be these answers here, right? So let's close that up a little bit. Um, First thing, what's our base case? Well, our base case is if this starting position, this starting index, if it equals our n, then we've reached the end of the string. And that means we've been able to partition this string up. So we'll get our, um, what am I doing here? This shouldn't be, we've got to name that something. We'll call that so far, and we'll put that into our output, so far. Now, otherwise, if we, are not at the end of the string, what do we want to do? Well, we have to check from this starting position every single substring all the way to the end, right? So that'll be 4i in range of from the starting to the end. What do we want to check? We have to check, is this a palindrome or not? So how do we do this? If s of i, um, no, I'm sorry, not i, the starting position, that's always going to be the same, and i plus 1, if this equals The same reversed, so we can just do this check. So this is basically checking, is this a palindrome, right? Is palindrome? Because if it's not a palindrome, there's no, re no reason to continue. There's no way to partition it at this point. Uh, so what we'll do is, if this is true, then we're going to call that first search. We're going to pass in i plus 1 as the new starting position, and take whatever we've gotten so far, and add this substring here. So this would be s start i plus 1. Otherwise, we just continue our loop to see if there's any other palindromes all the way to the end. And that should be it. So we'll just call our def for search. We're going to start the zero index, pa pass in an empty list, and return the output. So let's make sure this works. Hmm. One. Oh, right. Um, I gotta put that into a list. Let's try that again. 
You can also add it to a uh, temporary list and then pop it off, like do a backtracking thing here, but I always prefer to do it this way. Um, okay, there we go, it seems to work. Submit that. Uh, okay, so there we go, accepted. It's a little slow, but I think this is partially because they changed the test cases, so it's not actually this bad. Um, I believe there's a few things you can do to optimize it a little bit, but overall, it's really this is the accepted answer. Time complexity is going to be 2 to the nth power, I believe, uh, so it's exponential. So it's not great, but given our constraints and given the problem, I think this is probably the best way. Alright, thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.